Thanks for that, George. You can really tell he was in his element that morning. And it does really bring to light how much goes into designing a vehicle and how to keep them evolving. I'm inside the design studio now myself, and this is a place where cameras are rarely allowed. They've actually had to cover up a lot of what's around us because of how top secret it is. I'm here to find out more about the two other models which have benefited from some significant updates recently, the new Jaguar F-Pace and the XF. And whilst it's a normal practice for vehicle manufacturers to provide a, a nip and tuck to their products during their lifespan, a headlamp here, a bumper change there, with Jaguar, this has been taken to an entire another level. I'll be joined by Jaguar designers Alistair, Dominic and Siobhan, who are kind enough to take us through the details. Firstly, Dominic. To tell us what are the significances of these refreshes so we'll start with the f-pace here and uh, this one is uh, in eiger gray new color and it's the r dynamic specification which uh, replaces our sport um, and the top hse um, edition as well which is a very compelling desirable uh, product i'll talk you through the changes uh, to the car we've, we've made and i'll start with the front and at the very top here we've got basically a brand new bonnet and this um, enhances the sporting credentials of the car. It's got a wider, kind of more powerful uh, power bulge that really sort of gives that uh, subtle intent that this is a car to, you know, for the people who enjoy driving, mm -hmm. okay? And very importantly, the shut line that was previously here has been taken away and the surface cleanly runs to the top of the grille now, reducing shut lines and giving the car a higher quality appearance. And actually that visually lengthens the bonnet. So the grille itself is larger, you know, really giving it more assertive presence on the road. Um, and then what we have is a technical noble chrome finish as well, a really high level uh, bit of detailing there. The grille mesh is completely new and the uh, diamond faces are actually chrome tips as well. Tell and that me if gives... I'm being silly here, mm. but I recognize that shape. Yeah, so good spot, good spot, Saunas. We've got here, the shape of the diamonds themselves actually originate from the original Jaguar Heritage logo. Yes. Okay, so it. again, just getting that authenticity to the design and the detail and giving it a bit of a story and a, a unique Jaguar feel. After the grill, we then move over to the, to the headlamps. Now the headlamps now are sleeker, they're slimmer, they're 10 millimeters slimmer than before. Uh, due to high technology, full LED, and also as an option, the pixel LED, uh, very high level technology. And that technology has enabled us to make more of our signature design. So giving the car more identity, and even at night, this night design that we, we talk about. So we've gotten for this double J signature, the double J blade signature. And uh, there's like a uh, sort of like calligraphy quality to these lines as well, the, the line weights that goes from thin and, and grows to the outside. Mm. So it gives it a bit of a spontaneous uh, artistic um, impression. The, the actual pattern on the J-Blade what, is what we call the monogram pattern. And as you rightly noticed, it is a evolution of the, again, the heritage logo. And it's like, a, it's sort of like deconstructed and repeated to create a very unique pattern that has a story behind it. It's, it's unique to Jaguar. And again, you'll see that detail on the interior and the exterior. We've really worked hard to lovingly craft these cars and design them inside and out, just to make customers feel very special about, about having them. Awesome stuff. Then we move down to the bumper, completely new bumper that's been aerodynamically um, optimized. Um, you'll see with an air curtain in the, in the corner as well. And um, these graphics now just, you know, much more bold mm -hmm. and assertive and really ground uh, the outer corners of the car, just heightening that sense of uh, sportiness and, and presence again. You'll see we've got this, um, this loop fully enclosed uh, as well that just really, you know, emphasizes that corner of the car. There's very subtle layering as well, this like aerodynamic layered surface mm. of the inner blade and then the body and the, and the noble chrome again. So it just adds to that uh, intrigue uh, to the car. Okay, if you'd like to follow me around to the rear sure. and I'll show you about the new uh, enhancements there. So basically, again, this is about width and stance. Okay, so completely new tailgate and uh, tail lamps. Mm -hmm. Okay, these tail lamps now are slimmer, again, wider, and now they're kind of integrated more with the number plate aperture, just to create a more complete look and more harmonious. And what you'll see on the, uh, on the tail lamps is we've introduced this chicane signature, mm -hmm. a double chicane signature. That was first seen on iPace. So there's a subtle link there, just to bring the family feel together. And um, the lens itself is actually three-dimensional. So a nice touch uh, is that you've got the bodywork flush with the lens, okay? And then that allows us to sculpt and kind of um, emphasize the signatures in a three-dimensional way. Um, so again, quite a bold statement and uh, very technical uh, in appearance. Awesome stuff, great work. You've seen the, uh, the F-Pace, can you show me what the XF's like? Okay, so Saunders, as you can see, the XF takes all the bold and characterful updates of F-Pace on the front end as well. 
really elevating the car's sporting presence. Um, but on the rear, we've got even more change, especially lower down. We've mm. got a much more planted rear bumper. Really, you can see the, the, the bright graphic really points down to the corners, emphasizing the, the ground-hugging stance. And we can see a aerodynamically optimized diffuser as well there and on the lower area. So I'm picking up some real Formula E vibes with this diffuser aerodynamically. Can you talk a bit about that? Definitely. I mean, um, we work with the aerodynamicists in the wind tunnel, optimizing every surface and feature uh, to get the best performance, most efficient performance. And we really are inspired by motorsport and um, the Formula E uh, designs in, in that area. You can see this you know, diffuser shape with the, um, with the blades in the center to accelerate the air. Um, behind the car, so very much the motorsport inspired um, part of the car here. So we've talked about the exteriors of these cars, but now it's time to see what the interiors are all about. Let's go check them out. So we moved into the inside of the F-Pace and first of all, what a cabin this is. There's so much that changed and hopefully to help give us insight on those changes, I've got Alistair here, the head of interior designs. Hi, yeah, thank you. So. Um, you know, we're really, really proud and delighted to say that um, our all new XF and F Pace, which you see here, um, gets a completely new interior at this refresh stage. And, and really, that's quite unusual for, uh, for car manufacturers to, uh, to invest in that level of change. But, um, you know, Jaguar is a really premium, it's a very authentic, it's a very, you know, warm British brand. And, um, you know, kind of where we're heading, these cars you know, they really must signify, you know, kind of really what Jaguar is all about. So we've invested a lot of time and a lot of money um, into making these beautiful new interiors. And, you know, design's a continuous process. And, you know, we listen to a lot of customer feedback and a lot of media feedback, as well as kind of design feedback as well. And um, yeah, we've, we've, we've really upgraded the, the design, the comfort, the usability, the craftsmanship and uh, all the beautiful details. So I'm looking around the cabin and there's just so much that's different. I don't even know where to start about what to pick out from. Perhaps you could tell me what elements are your favourite. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, no, definitely. I think, I think for me, the dashboard um, is one of my favourite parts of the interior. And, um, you know, it's really, really modern. It's really clean. Um, like all Jaguars, when you sit inside the car, it's really easy on the eye and it's got a very, very clear design statement. Nice and horizontal. Um, all of the new, lovely, soft premium materials are brought, brought, to, brought to the front for the customers to kind of appreciate. And then nestled, you know, beautifully in the middle of this new dashboard is this uh, fantastic new curved touchscreen, uh, which nestles, you know, really nicely into the profile that we've created on, on the dashboard there. So, you know, the two of them marry up really, really nicely. Now we have actually got a question from Ladies Tennis Star and British number one, Joanna Conter. Take it away, Joanna. Hi everyone. I've always loved that Jaguar is quintessentially British, much like Wimbledon. What in your view makes Jaguar feel British and what goes into making a Jaguar, a Jaguar? So there we go, what makes Jaguar, Jaguar? Alistair? I think for us, um, Jaguar is, it's, it's a really uh, warm brand and it's a very luxurious brand and it's got a real sense of modernity and of course that British design about it. Now, um, I think certainly when you sit in XF and you sit in F-Pace, the premium materials, that sense of tactility is really coming to the surface in these new cars. Beautifully designed, super modern, really the latest kind of connectivity coming in as well. But um, I think Britishness as well is, is quite a lot about kind of creative tension when you see great examples of British design in architecture, in fashion, in product design. Um, there's that creative tension between a little bit of referencing the old and reinterpreting that into something really uh you know radical and 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 forward thinking and you know we've taken that approach in f-pace as well we got these you know beautiful uh soft leathers and kind of genuine you know um aluminium finishes and we're kind of reinterpreting the those kind of details and finishes and, and bringing them alive with a little bit of sense of humor and a little bit of wit um i think just one example to bring that to life here is is the cricket ball mm -hmm. and um we we love the kind of the detail of the stitching on this and uh, you'll see that evident on, on our lovely palm shifter on the centre console there. And, um, you know, at first glance for a customer, they might not know where that unique stitching has come from. But Jaguar is all about telling those stories. And actually it came from, you know, a beautiful piece of British craftsmanship like this. So I want to move on to talking about comfort. Now, that, that is something that I, I immediately associate with driving a Jaguar. It's always a comfortable experience. What's new about the XF and the F-Pace? Yeah, so I think, you know, you know, the design and engineering teams have done a, you know, absolutely remarkable job in refining the, you know, these two cars. And, uh, 
you know, I think com comfort for Jaguar is, is really reflected in a kind of like an all sensory experience. So uh, we spent a lot of time refining the, um, the softness and the support in our seats across the range. But, you know, for us, comfort also, also comes in kind of the haptic quality of the, of the materials of, of which in all of these cars are all soft wrapped. We've got our noise cancelling technology first to market. Uh, we've also got um, the kind of the improved stowage. You see all of the, uh, the kind of the wireless charging and customer stowage that you see in, in the doors. And of course, the armrest that you're resting your elbow on there as well. That's been improved with a sliding feature as well that allows you to have, you know, a really nice posture when you're operating the touchscreen as well. So comfort radically improved on these cars and really an, an all sensory experience. Excellent stuff. Great work to you and the team. Now, we do actually have another question from Joanna. Joanna, take it away. Obviously, playing at Wimbledon, the colour choice is simple. Everyone wears white. <laughs> at Jaguar, I've always been curious. How do you predict the colour choices your customers will make and keep the options fresh? Now, I've actually wondered that myself. Hopefully, to help shed some light, I've got Siobhan here from Colour and Materials to tell us more. Thank you, Saunders. So at Jaguar, the subtleties of colour are subject to as much debate and discussion as the finer points of vehicle design. And so not surprisingly, there's a team of experts that are dedicated to work on this aspect of design, working very closely with the exterior designers. So exterior colour can take up to four years to develop, and therefore it's our job to predict the colours that are going to be the most relevant in four years' time. If the wide choice on the Jaguar colour palette doesn't match your desires, then of course there is the option to match any colour you would like in our special vehicle operations. Fascinating stuff. Now I just need to decide which colour I'd go for. And speaking of special vehicle operations, if you've missed it, Jaguar have just revealed the new F-Pace SVR, a V8 supercharged powerhouse with motorsport-inspired elements throughout. Do go check it out on the Jaguar website. But now, time for us to take a look at the latest technology because there's plenty to find out about. So I'm now joined by Damien Dinning, who's going to talk to us about Jaguar Land Rover's new infotainment system, Pivi Pro, which has been in the works for almost five years. Now, Damien, it must be amazing to have yours and the team's hard work finally come to fruition. Tell us about it. Yeah, it's been an incredibly exciting time, um, having been working on it for all of that time, to now have it in the marketplace and to be able to talk about it. So it's, it's a true testament to the, to the huge effort that the whole team has put in to deliver this uh, system to, to, to our customers. We know that this in-car technology is, is really important to them. The part of the system that I'm most proud of is, is the home screen. And this is where we've initially optimised the experience around the navigation, phone and media systems. But just in this one screen, um, customers can operate 80 to 90% of what they use most on a daily basis, all from this, this one screen. So it makes a, the experience really simple and intuitive. The system is fully connected. It's smarter and faster than previous systems as well. Pivi Pro also supports a 12.3 inch interactive driver display, all of which are fully configurable, allowing you to prioritise the information you want to see, whether it be directions, nearby fuel stations or traffic delays. All of these enhancements and many more are designed to reduce the load on the driver. Pivi Pro, its apps and maps and various control modules throughout the vehicle can also now be updated over the air. So the system is always up to date. In fact, the whole vehicle is fully up to date. So you always benefit from the very latest software and the very latest features. And over time, we'll be progressively adding more and more features to the system. It's really cool. Now that's some seriously impressive tech. You mentioned earlier about it being smarter. What do you mean by that? So Pivi Pro has its own dedicated battery, and this helps the system start really quickly. So by the time you're seated in the car and you press the start button of the vehicle, it's ready to go. The navigation system is always learning about your regular routes and roads that you drive on. And so it will display in the home screen a predicted destination. Once you're on your route, we have a new feature called smart voice guidance. And if there's an issue with the uh, traffic ahead on this route, then the system will chime in and inform you of possible delays. And it will steer you to an alternative route. Now, if this means that you're now driving on roads that you're unfamiliar with, um, the system will automatically engage voice guidance. Once you return to routes and roads that you're familiar with, 
the system will automatically mute the voice guidance. So it allows you to enjoy the full potential of the Meridian sound system or the hush of the electric powertrain in the iPACE. So the car can learn from personal preferences? Yes, absolutely. This is uh, going to be a software update that's going to be coming uh, early next year, which will allow the, the artificial intelligence uh, to be utilised to learn what your personal preferences are on a daily basis, what you use at certain times of day on, on different days. So, for example, um, if it's really cold and it's, it's learnt that when it's below a certain temperature, on those days, I get into the car and I put my heated seats on and my heated steering wheel. It's going to do that automatically for me without me having to reach for any buttons. I just get in the car and enjoy. So everything is designed to be smart whilst also being non-intrusive. That's incredibly impressive stuff. And that's particularly what... This is very unprofessional. I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, it's Bryden. Oh. Hey, how are you? Can I call you back later? I'm in the middle of talking about Pivi. I've heard about this, this PIVI uh, satellite navigation system. I have some questions for you. Now, I mean, how good is it? I hear it's very good because I've had problems with SatNav um, over the years. Will this system uh, take into account uh, traffic situations? Uh, will it get me to my destination any quicker? I don't know. Will it, Damien? Well, we've completely redesigned the navigation system in PIVI Pro. Um, so. The first thing is that it's much easier to set a destination now in the system. We've more than halved the number of steps that are required to, to do this. In terms of getting you there faster, the system is extremely advanced and it's using real-time information all the time. Um, multiple probes in vehicles that are traveling the, across the whole road network is feeding the system so it understands where those traffic uh, incidents are. So as long as we know about those, then we hopefully we can avoid those incidents. And so hopefully, yes, you'll be able to get to your destination faster. OK, well, that, that's, that sounds good. That's impressive. Um, I'm assuming it has voice activation. But here's the thing. Will it work with different accents? Now, that is a good question, Damien. Well, why don't we give it a go? OK, let's give it a try. Um, hey, Jaguar, take me to 33 Baker Street, London. 33 Baker Street, London. Okay, yeah, one more. Hello, Jaguar. Take me to 33 Baker Street, London. 33 Baker Street. Yeah, that word. Right, go on, Rob. One more. Hi, Jaguar. <laughs> Take me to 33 Baker Street in London. 33 Baker Street, London. Look at that. Home run. Nice one, Rob. Well, it's very impressive. I mean, I've lost my own voice now. Very impressive. Very good, Rob. Maybe you could be the next voice of Pivi. Well, you know, you, you know where I am. Let's not rule anything out. Last question, why is it called Pivi? Good question. Can you shed light on that, Damien? Well, Pivi is a short, snappy name, uh, which we thought just made the system sound a little bit more human. It also works really well internationally. Mm, OK, makes sense. Thank you very much, chaps. Have a great time. Thanks, Rob. See you, mate. Bye-bye. Really very sorry about that. That is classic Bryden. So back to the matter of hand, we were talking about how the touchscreen has customization features, but I'm also noticing that there's still some physical dials involved. Yes, you're right. There, there does seem to be an industry trend uh, to, to put everything into, into the touchscreen. Um, but what we've learned from, uh, from our customers is that there's, there's still a preference for, for some physical controls, particularly climate controls. So hence why we've, um, we've incorporated uh, into the, the overall customer experience. So what about phone connectivity? So the system as standard is compatible with both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So you can use the, the apps that both of those platforms support safely through the, the vehicle's touchscreen. One of the other great functions that we've got through Pivi Pro is for Bluetooth support, you can now pair two different phones at the same time. So what we find is a lot of people love the ability to be able to have a personal and a work phone, both connected to the system, and either phone can ring. Um, to accept incoming calls, really simple. Very cool, and what about our wireless charging? Have we got that? Yep, so our vehicles now support, there's a, a charging mat inside the, in the vehicle, so you can place your, your, uh, your handset there, compatible handset, and it will wirelessly charge for you. 
Thanks, Damien. That's really, really impressive stuff. And it's no wonder that Pivi recently won a Smart Best Award. So something tells me that what we've covered here is only really scratching the surface. As a Formula E racing presenter, I'm keen to hear the latest on matters under the bonnet. Here we have the new E-Pace, the most compact of Jaguar's SUV range, befitting of its nickname, the Cub. It benefits from many of the design changes we saw on the F-Pace, the introduction of Pivi Pro Plus, some new engine options. Now, Craig Hargreaves is here from Powertrain Engineering and matches my passion for motors. Craig, what can you tell us about the new updates? So for Saunders, for uh, 2021, we've got a host of new technologies and perhaps more importantly, increased customer choice. Um, through Jaguar's Formula E programme, we've been able to take our learning and experience from the racetrack and constantly look at ways of incorporating that into our production EV uh, vehicles such as Jaguar's all-electric I-PACE. Also really important for 2021 is uh, the introduction of 48 volt mild hybrid onto uh, the majority of our models, which effectively takes our already well-renowned and established petrol and diesel engines and improves performance and efficiency even further. So MHEV, mild hybrid, that's a phrase that we're hearing quite a lot these days. Can you explain what does that actually mean? Yes, yeah, so uh, put simply, 48 volt MHEV or mild hybrid, as uh, you might hear it called, is effectively takes the energy uh, lost through uh, deceleration and braking and combined with a petrol or diesel engine, then re uh, applies that energy back into the engine to assist it, um, which basically means uh, you improve your overall levels of efficiency. Um, there's no battery charging um, and there's no pure electric driving but 48 volt MHEV uh, coupled with the improvements in drivability and performance um, also reduces CO2 emissions and improves real world fuel economy. And an MHEV option is going to be available on the E-PACE, F-PACE, XE and XF. Yep. But what about plug-in hybrids? Is that an option that's going to be available as well? For E-PACE and uh, F-PACE, we're introducing plug-in hybrid options which deliver up to 34 miles of uh, electric driving which is great for the average daily commute. Mm -hmm. um, the key differences between uh, MHEV and PHEV really are twofold. Firstly, as the name implies, um, plug-in variants uh, require you to plug the battery in to charge it via an external charger. And we're really proud to offer uh, DC charging on our Jaguar PHEVs, um, which enables you to charge the battery from zero to 80% in just 30 minutes when connected to a DC charger. Uh, secondly, and this is my favorite bit, um, you can drive in electric only mode and that's great for zero tailpipe emission free driving or also that silent arrival experience. That's great stuff and for those less EV savvy can you tell me what are the benefits of a plug-in hybrid? Yeah well um, first of all make no mistake these are really enjoyable cars to drive with combined power outputs from the petrol engine plus the electric motor of 300 PS for the e-pace and 400 PS for the F-Pace. Um, in, in combined with the uh, instant torque from the electric motor, I can guarantee you won't be left standing at the traffic lights. Economically, PHEVs offer lower running costs, not only in terms of reduced fuel costs, but also in terms of the tax incentives available to both business and personal users. And the lower CO2 emissions mean lower vehicle excise duty and also benefit in kind rates from just 10% for business owners and company car users. Very good. So that's already got me thinking about what the future looks like. Can you give me a glimpse? What's, what's coming up for Jaguar? For Jaguar Land Rover globally, um, we're committed to a cleaner future. Um, and that runs from our ultra clean diesel and petrol engines through to our battery electric vehicles, our plug-in hybrids and our mild hybrids that now form part of our strategic plans. We're committed to UK production and manufacturing and we're already moving forward with our electric vehicle production plans in our plant at Castle Bromwich. In addition to that, Jaguar Land Rover's Destination Zero strategy also aims to deliver a sustainable future through zero congestion, zero emissions, zero accidents. And that's really paving the way for us for a really exciting future. That is excellent stuff. Now we've had a question in, interesting topic, yeah. hydrogen. Talk uh, to me about the use of hydrogen. As we've already discussed, uh, Jaguar Land Rover are committed to constantly reviewing um, and updating our strategy in line with what really is an ever-evolving global landscape. Um, and that includes research into credible alternative propulsion technologies. Um, 
Clearly, um, the global environment at the moment is biased towards EV, um, both from a cost and infrastructure perspective. But make no mistake, we're not under the illusion that that could change at any moment in the future, and we need to be ready to react to it if and when that happens. Interestingly, talking about Jaguar's involvement in Formula E, we've actually got a message, a few questions right. from my pals, Sam and Mitch, from the Jaguar hey. racing team. Should we take a look? Yeah, yeah, let's have a look. Hey, Saunders. So as you are well aware, uh, battery management is absolutely key in our game in Formula E. My question to you is, what have Jaguar done with the new PHEV to maximise battery range and battery management? We've, we've been working really hard um, with our electrification strategies to develop new and flexible ways to support battery management um, on our PHEVs. Um, clearly, recovering the energy, as we've already said, through uh, deceleration and braking is paramount but we've also been developing new and flexible features integrated into the vehicle in order to be able to uh, support improved efficiency and increasing the range as much as we can. As you'd expect, in a plug-in hybrid, we've got uh, normal hybrid and electric only modes, but we also have a charge save mode that actually allows you, as the name implies, to hold and maintain the charge in the battery and even be able to increase it on the move so that you can then use it at a later point in your journey when it might be more efficient or appropriate to do so. Pivi Pro also really helps here. Um, it can identify where the nearest charging station is, tell you whether it's available or not, can tell you how much um, it costs to charge the vehicle and it can tell you what your charging status is. Integrated into Pivi Pro also is our smart navigation system, which when you enter a destination, utilizes our predictive energy optimization feature, which actually looks at the most efficient route allied to the vehicle functions, and also programs itself with the most efficient driving mode combinations to drive that route. We do actually have a question from his teammate as okay. well, Mitch Evans, long-term Jaguar driver. Let's see what you have to say. Hey Saunders, we're down here in sunny Spain, testing our brand new Jaguar i-Type 5. Obviously informally, we're super lucky we turn up to the circuits and all the charging facilities are already in place. What's the latest charging infrastructure in the UK and what are you guys doing to support home charging? Now that is a very key question and one I'm sure many will want to know the answer to. What can you tell us? Well, um, the UK charging infrastructure is continually evolving and developing. Um, over the last two years, uh, it's almost doubled in size. Um, there's a myriad of apps available out there um, to manage and help you determine which charge points you can use. Uh, I'd recommend ZapMap or PlugShare. Um, with regard to home charging, um, there's actually some very cost-effective solutions out there. The UK government offers up to 75% grant to contribute to the installation of a home charging uh, system and the setup process is also very easy. You can do that for, through one of our preferred suppliers that you can arrange through your local Jaguar retailer. Thank you for that and thank you Mitch and Sam for your questions. Good luck for the season ahead, it's going to be so good to have Formula E back on track again. So with these new powertrain options, Jaguar has expanded choice for customers and gives a clear indication to where the brand is heading. We've only had a sneak preview into the 2021 models, and if you want more information on a specific model, there are detailed model walkaround videos on the Jaguar UK YouTube channel. And if you'd like to be one of the first to take an unaccompanied test drive in any of the latest models, you can request a test drive via the link below by visiting the Jaguar website or contacting your local retailer. Finally from me, thanks very much for joining us. Stay safe and we hope to see you again soon.